Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Engaging Ideas, the Parsons TKO podcast, where we like to bring leaders and innovators within the nonprofit sector to share their thoughts and have conversations with us and hopefully provide some insights and ideas to you and your work uh, and your daily life as well. And this episode today is a special recording. We are going to have this recording come out on Tuesday, October 11th, with, which is National Coming Out Day. Uh, and today I am very privileged to be joined by Sharon Herrera. Uh, she is the founder and executive director of LGBTQ Saves, which is an organization in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Welcome, Sharon. Hello. Really? Hello. Hey. Uh, and <laughs> we, we are recording on video, too, so we're going to have audio and video clips of this. It's going to be exciting. Um, and, you know, I we've been running this podcast for over a year now. We've not made any direct asks of our audience at this point, but today I am going to ask, please consider getting a donation to LGBTQ Saves. It is, and we're going to have the website linked in the show notes. It's going to be linked everywhere we're putting this out. And for anyone listening at the moment, it is lgbtqsaves.org. And you will see a donate link right in the upper right of that website. Please click on that and get some money to LGBTQ saves. You will save a life today if you mm. can make that happen. Before we dive in, yeah, uh, in the prep for this show, Sharon, we had talked about one of the things was could we get voices from some of the youth you've worked with or get them into the show? And you know, I, I did not want to do that just for certain protections and a lot of the you know, there's a lot of issues with child protective acts and uh, being online, but I did, you know, scour your website here and I've pulled a few quotes. So I want to uh, read that uh, here just for anyone listening and they can see this on your website too. But before we dive in, just uh, to give people a real sense of the impact your organization's been having. And these are quotes from uh, some of the youth that you've worked with. My family and friends do not support my identity as a lesbian. My dad told me I did not know who I am yet. A teacher told me it was just a phase and to choose better friends. My mom has not... Shoot, I'm getting emotional. Shit, I might not even be able to make it through the quotes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll try to get another one. Let me get another drink of water. We'll leave this in the episode too. I mean, this is, this is some real impact, y'all. All right, hold on. <laughs> I'm trying for you, audience. All right. I am thankful my sister found LGBTQ saves for me. I get to visit and talk to people my age that understand what I am going through. I am just me. Wonderful, silly, lovable me. I wanted to end my life at one time. And now I have other people to reach out to for support when I'm feeling sad. That's heavy. You know, uh, LGBTQSAVES.org. I know a lot of the listeners in our audience are not possibly living in Texas. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit today just about where some of the laws have gone, the humanitarian crisis that we're facing here. And I would love Beto to win, I think, as much as everyone <laughs> that I know, at least in the state and a lot of people around the country. He's a very exciting figure. Beto's got a lot of money, y'all. This organization really needs your help. So please consider donating today if you're listening. All right, let's dive in. I don't know if I'm making the rest of the quotes, but they are on your, they are on the website. They're super powerful, obviously, um, and the work you're doing, Sharon, has just been uh, amazing and fantastic, uh, and I really appreciate it. So let's go. All right, thank you for diving in to talk with me today. Uh, so can you tell the audience just about LGBTQ Saves and the mission? The mission is to provide safe and brave spaces for our youth to simply be themselves. Uh, we have a lot of programs, a lot of resources for our youth. It was something in 2010, September 2010 to be exact, there was nine suicides back to back of LGBTQ youth. <laughs> the youngest one being Asher Brown, 13 years old. He took his life on September the 23rd, 2010 here in Texas. And uh, I work for Fort Worth ISD, uh, one of the largest school districts in the state of Texas, and I knew exactly what was going on in our school systems. Uh, the bullying was intense and uh, not a lot of support. So, uh, and it also triggered my suicide attempt. I attempted suicide at the age of 16 
back in the late seventies. I am 58 years old. I will be 59 next month. And back then I didn't know about drugs or guns. So the way I was going to take my life was Drano. Uh, mm. Drano had the little skeleton sign with the X on it. And I read that it would, uh, you know, cause death if ingested. So that's the way I was, I chose to take my life. I was a Catholic priest that told me I was going to hell that finally led to my suicide attempt. I'm Latina, uh, born and raised Catholic. And uh, there was no LGBTQ safe back then or a counselor or anybody talked about, you know, the LGBT community. And if they did, it was all negative. Um, dating myself, there was a show called Soap back in the day with Billy Crystal. I remember he, that one. <laughs> <laughs> he portrayed a gay man. And uh, he was made fun of on the show. And also the family I was watching the show with was making light of him in front of him. So that my dark, my closet got darker and darker and I had nowhere to turn to. So uh, ending my life was going to be the answer for me. And the reason that I'm sitting here having the conversation with, with you today is of uh, uh, seven words that my aunt uh, said to me. Uh, she walked in when I was trying to ingest the Drano and knocked the cup out of my hand and said, I know, mija, you don't like boys. And uh, that's what saved my life and why I'm still here. My aunt is currently 80 years old. We text every day. We talk every day. She lives back home in San Angelo, Texas, a very small town in Texas. And uh, like I said, those words uh, are the reason that I'm alive. One affirming adult and still the day stands true that one affirming adult will save a life. So that is the reason that uh, these suicides in our nation triggered my suicide attempt. And I started at LGBTQ Saves. And I always tell people, I still don't know what I'm doing as far as running a nonprofit, but all I wanted to do was save lives. And here I am. I've been blessed enough to have board members and uh, friends that know about nonprofits and guided me along the way. I was told uh, from the very beginning in 2010 that this nonprofit wouldn't last but two or three years because we're 100% donor funded. But here we are 12 years later thriving. Okay. It's, it's about saving lives to me. Well, thank you. And thank you for sharing your story there with us too. And, you know, it's really personal and really appreciate you uh, helping us hear that story. And so if somebody, uh, someone needed help, how would they go about getting that help from your org? How do... How does this contact happen? Our, our social media, our, uh, we have a, an email, contact us at lgbtqsaves.org. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our, you know, our Facebook, our Twitter, everything. You can private message us, our website as well. Uh, my number's always out there. Uh, I, I get phone calls at three o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning, all hours of the day asking for help because I tell everybody here locally, just give them my number if you're not comfortable and I will help. So uh, yeah, my telephone number is given out a lot of times. Uh, I don't know if you want me to give it out here national, nationwide, but I don't mind. Uh, my life has been threatened. I will give you that warning. I have an FBI agent that is assigned to me because of that. I'm not scared to give out my number if it's needed. So, uh, well, we'll make sure we get the, the, e the email at least. And, you know, I don't want to add any, any more pressure to you than, <laughs> that might already be coming your way. Um, thank you. Thank you. But definitely, uh, a lot of, a lot of parents, a lot of youth during COVID, uh, a lot of Latino families, our numbers went up from, I think it was 17% to over 38 because of COVID. A lot of kids were at home and, uh, I always say our youth are so much stronger and braver than I was at the age of 16. I had a 10 year old call me and, and, and tell me what I explained to his mom about being transgender, all in Spanish. So mm -hmm. I was able to contact mom and we had a conversation. There were so many uh, Latino Spanish speaking families reaching out that we had to create a Spanish tab on our website for strictly our Spanish speaking parents that were calling. Not one father called, but I can tell you about eight to 10 mothers did call during COVID. Wow. wow. What struggles do you have to deal with when you're trying to aid LGBTQ youth uh, in particular? The uh, homeless homelessness, because we don't have anything here in, in the city of Fort Worth. We have maybe places that will uh, allow one night or two, but not for a long term. So we have a we have a lot of uh, we have to send our kids to Dallas. 
our sister city and our, our brother city, whatever. When I got here to Fort Worth, I didn't know there was such much friction between the cities of Dallas and Fort Worth. I was, yeah, that thing. I, yeah, I didn't understand. But unfortunately, we have to send our kids to Dallas because there's really nothing here in the city of Fort Worth for our youth. The other issue is transportation, transportation for our youth that we have to send to Dallas and our youth that want to attend our, our events that we have here in the city of Fort Worth. Uh, so we got a little bit into to what drove you to want to start the organization. And oh. <laughs> I mean, you're, you have, I mean, the motivation to keep going, even though you have these threats, uh, you know, what kind of help have you been getting along the way as you've been starting this to taking it for these 12 years i mean that's uh yeah where's <laughs> <Like I said, laughs> some superhero work right there <laughs> yeah at the beginning it was money out of pocket mm. uh, we were able to save enough money in 2016 to start our own nonprofit. an attorney john barnes i love him to death <laughs> he reviewed our paperwork so we didn't have to pay the big fee to get all this started um, through a through an other, another company. So we just had to come up with $500 to, for the state of Texas to certify us as a nonprofit. So in 2016 is when we were able to do that. And we received our first $3,000 check, I remember from a local church. And we were able to buy uh, provide a scholarship, a $1,000 scholarship, order some t-shirts and uh, just buy some, spend some stuff that we needed for our youth, for our youth meetings. Mm -hmm. Back then we had one youth, youth group meeting a month. And now we have all Thursdays mm -hmm. and it's incredible what has happened because we were so tiny. We could only afford so much. And now we've kind of, not that we could afford a lot of stuff, but we're able to have enough money to have People that like Eamon Carter's coming forth forward and they did our they do our fourth Thursday free and they provide food as well. We during COVID, we pan I panicked and uh, my younger staff said, let's go virtual. And I said, OK, what does that look like? And because of going virtual, be, despite COVID, we now are in Connecticut, Ohio, Michigan and Florida. Oh, wow. I didn't realize yeah, you've so expanded. We, we blew, we, those were never my intentions, but because we went virtual, kids were reaching out to us from everywhere. The child in Michigan that reached out to us had, had come out to his father. His father beat him up, threw him out of the house. He Googled us, found us. We were able to get CPS involved, and he now lives with his grandmother. Wow. So uh, that's the kind of stuff that was going on during COVID. We were being called from everywhere. There was a young, a young child in, I believe it was Iowa, and he sent his family sent us five hundred dollars. His family told him to select an organization he wanted to donate. They wanted to donate money to, and he googled us and found us. So we received five hundred dollars from that family. Um, but yeah, COVID. You know, it, yes, it was horrible, but for us, it just it allowed us to get bigger and bigger, and and reach out and, and save even more lives. There's different things you do provide to some of the youth as well, in addition to trying to get them into housing as well. You know, gender identity affirming yes. products. And, yes, uh, the gender affirming wear, uh, gender affirming haircuts. We uh, collaborate with Acute Salon and Novak Salon here in the city of Fort Worth. And we, we uh, Novak provides free haircuts for our LGBTQ youth that we serve and our volunteers. And also uh, a cute salon. We pay half price because they're a smaller salon. So mm -hmm. we provide that as, as well. We provide scholarships. We provide, uh, we started with 250 and then we moved up to 1000 because of that donation. So we provide uh, two scholarships in June and two scholarships in December. One to a high school student that's been with us that's about to graduate and one to a college intern that has been serving us. We're very well connected with Tarleton State University here in the city of Fort Worth. And uh, for the past six years, their social work interns have been donating 75 hours, 35, 35, and 15 per semester. And that is the reason that we're, we've stayed alive because of those volunteer hours. The first interns that we had created our first website, our website has been upgraded since then, and it will continue to get upgraded, but they were able to do our first website ever. Uh, and it was just an incredible experience to have these the, these interns. One intern I remember was uh, disowned because the family found out that they were serving LGBTQ saves. Another uh, intern, her son was able to come out to her at the age of 27 because he was contemplating suicide, but because his mother 
was a social worker and started working with us, he was hearing and listening to the way the mother was speaking now and uh, African-American family, you know, very difficult. And at the age of 27, contemplating suicide, he was able to come out to his mom. So those stories are incredible because, you know, they come back and tell me these things and you just don't know how, how far you're reaching out and, and touching people's lives and, and saving lives. That uh, that's why uh, sometimes on my Facebook, I have, it doesn't matter whether they're seven, 17 or 27, you know, they're listening and hearing everything that you're saying. And are you accepting your child unconditionally? Wow. Um, and if, if you could for the audience, uh, there's people in our audience working at nonprofits of all different sizes, budget sizes and ranges. I mean, what's the type of budget you're doing all of this work on annually? What's your, <laughs> what's, the size, what's the size just to help the audience get a sense. And then, so then they'll all rush to LGBTQSAVES.org. And donate. Yeah. My treasurer just told me that in 2018, we had $287 in the checking account <laughs> but because of COVID we, we are now at in the nineties. So we're able to provide more and more and more to our kids. And uh, I mean, we have, uh, Santa drives. We have back to school drives. We have youth pride coming up our picnic, our youth pride picnic. We had last year, we made the cover of Dallas morning news, not Fort Worth, Dallas morning news. We had over 200 families, kids and families show up this past year, this year today, this year, this past June, we had over 400 with a waiting list of 200 people trying to get in. So next year it'll probably be even bigger, but, but that's, those are, that's what costs the most to provide a safe and brave space for these kids to be themselves. Um, I can't imagine, I, mean, I can tell you the first event we had back in 2011, because we had saved some money to have a, was a prom. We had 27 youth show up and all of us chaperones, adults in the background were crying because these kids were having so much fun just being themselves, just being able to be. And us adults, you know, we're in our, but back then I was in my forties and I was like, wow, <laughs> you know, we were all crying because we never had that opportunity. And if we could do this over and over again to our, for our youth, you know, at, 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 that's what we're doing. Mm. Just creating that, that hope is so important because that's what they're holding on to. You know, I often say as a kid, I loved the Wizard of Oz, right? And the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. There's a land that I, that I've, heard of once in a lullaby or dreams that you dare to dream to really do come true. I really believe that, but it wasn't until my teenage years that I said, Oh, there is no such land for me. Hmm. It was the seventies. So that's why, you know, another reason that led to the suicide attempt, there was no such land. So what I'm trying to create is that land. It, it's not just in a, in a lullaby that you heard once in a lullaby, right? It's right here in the city of Fort Worth. And being the, I don't know, for the 12th or 13th largest city in the nation, we need something like this here. We, we need something for our youth. It, it's just so important to give these, these kids hope, the hope that they need to carry on their lives and be who they're going to be. Uh, we recently purchased the, uh, the former KKK building. I don't know if you're familiar with I that. Do. Yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. fantastic story. Yes. I mean, so you, gotta, you might want to tell the audience about <laughs> it. It's not as familiar. I do want to interview uh, Adam and Daniel at some point, too. Yes, yes. We, we, uh, we're one of the seven groups that are going to be housed there. And uh, it's an incredible story. A man was lynched here in the city of Fort Worth 101 years ago now at our stockyards. And he was let, they were, he was beat up because we're crossing a, a, a union a line, or I don't know what they're called, a picket line. And they left him, they thought they had left him for dead. He was taken to the hospital here in the city of Fort Worth. The KKK found out about it, dragged him out and hung him at Samuels Avenue. And uh, we're naming our, our, uh, our building after him, the Fred Rouse uh, Arts and Community Healing Center. And it's an incredible story because we're going to, we're, we're eradicated the roots of hate and we're planting seeds of hope and love. And our kids will have a safe place where they know that they can just walk in, not question if they're going to be accepted and loved. Yeah, just for everyone listening to this, this building that we're talking about here, this was the former KKK auditorium yes. for massive entertainment and rallies that they would have in Fort Worth located right within sight of the city hall. 
nice. um, to really sort of show their power in the clout and the group Transform 1012 North Main that LGBTQ Saves and Sharon is a part of has secured the building so it won't be knocked down uh, and it's going to be transformed into the Center for Healing and Arts because uh, I think it was Adam had said this before and I heard this when I had worked at the U.S. Institute of Peace, you know, pain, uh, pain not transformed is pain transferred. And so mm -hmm. how do we start to change that that narrative and use something like this? I mean, I really think it is a super beacon of light and hope um, at to your point. These are the things yeah. we need yes. in, in these uh, <laughs> darker times. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can see maybe uh, get a glimpse of Sharon's uh, shirt, but you might also be listening because <laughs> most people have just been listening, but she is wearing an Air Force shirt because she is a vet. Uh, so one of my questions before we dive into some of the state laws here is just as you were starting up the organization, I know uh, when there's veteran status for small businesses or different organizations, it usually helps when you're trying to file legally. I mean, what did that help at all uh, as you were working with this lawyer to get to the 501c3 or... Yeah, you know, no, what's your what's it, your story there? It it didn't that didn't come up at all because we were using a, sh a shortcut to get okay. there. And uh, but as a veteran, you know, I served long before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I was survived witch hunts, uh, article I believe thirty. I can't remember them at all. The articles that I survived, but uh, I served my country proudly, and I wanted to continue twenty to thirty years, but I was only able to serve four because there were so many witch hunts. And uh, I do, I'm a consultant as well. So I provide LGBTQ 101 training for a lot of organizations that want to better serve their clients or their employees or youth if they serve youth. And I always, uh, I always remember uh, Alan Schindler because that is the gentleman that they brutally killed and the reason that Don't Ask, Don't Tell evolved. But even after Don't Ask, Don't Tell was in place, over 30,000 soldiers still got kicked out. So I have friends now that were kicked out back then that are now being allowed to uh, reapply for their honorable discharge instead of having a dishonorable discharge wow. on their record. It was a horrible time. And since I worked in the accounting and finance area and I processed soldiers out every day, you know, every I could see why they were being kicked out. So it added a lot of stress to my being. And that's why I just served four years in the Air Force. So I am a proud veteran. I'd do it again, but it was very difficult for me back then. You have shouldered a lot. For anyone not following Texas politics, uh, maybe as closely as those of us living through it at the moment, it's gone a little insane. Lately, they passed a lot of laws. I think that was around September 21, mm -hmm. uh, September 2021, when they came out. It was I'm calling it a humanitarian crisis. There's obviously uh, nationally people are have had the spotlight, the abortion bans, the, the laws against basically against women here in the state, uh, but they have come out really hard against trans youth uh, in the state of Texas. And I think it's really important every time you're talking about people being able to show up and be themselves, you know, that's, they're trying to criminalize that here uh, in the state of Texas. Um, I think for anyone who's maybe not as familiar, I mean, can you just give a little bit of insight into sort of what you're from your perspective and the youth you're working with. I mean, how these laws are starting to impact um, some of the kids here and what those laws are, if anyone might not be as familiar. Yeah. The, we have families that are leaving the state and uh, just recently I went to an event and I found out another set of parents were leaving. They're moving to Colorado. And uh, the reason being because their child is trans. I mean, there's house bill 29 and I believe eight thirteen ninety nine. And they're all against transgender youth, uh, the ability to receive gender affirming medical care, the to play sports, and they're even coming after the the physicians as well. And uh, I believe Senate Bill 1646, uh, able to punish a parent for facilitating that care as child abuse. Texas is is very scary right now. But even the nation, with Clarence Thomas coming in, saying that maybe we should reverse same-sex marriage it's just i don't know really what's happening it's just it's so dangerous especially the trans bills are so dangerous especially for our youth uh i believe these bills are rooted in fear mm. discrimination and misinformation and it's simply cruel because we're attacking children and i just don't understand that i can't comprehend i don't have any children but i serve 
so many, and uh, I can't imagine wanting to hurt a child. I'm considered everybody's fairy gay mother. <laughs> <laughs> I was given that name when I first started this organization by the first 14 year old youth that we helped. And I've carried that on ever since, but I just can't imagine being so cruel to children. And uh, all of these governmental restrictions deprive children of their personal growth and development. That is why we focus on that uh, social and personal development with the uh, LGBTQ saves. You know, children who are trans, they feel even more isolated and depressed because of what's going on in our state. Uh, Abbott and I believe Paxton. Paxton. Yeah, Paxton is is really. Anyway, he's uh, he's he's something else. We we ne- we really have to vote these people out if we're going to stay in Texas. So September 27th, Dallas Morning News today. Anyone who wants to go back, since this is coming out on October 11th, Ken Paxton had his wife uh, take him in an SUV and leave the house so he can avoid being subpoenaed for a trial for some more of his misconduct deeds that he's done. Quality. There was something, uh, I-, I saved it, in, in, in right after Pride, they, they, did, they wrote a 40-page document adopted at the state party's first in-person convention since 2019, 2018, declaring homosexuality, they were here it is, homosexuality as a normal lifestyle choice in a section on homosexuality, homosexuality and gender issues. And I'm going to read this paragraph to you. Let me get my phone. We believe there should be no granting of special legal entitlements or creation of special status for homosexual behavior, regardless of state of origin, and we oppose any criminal or civil penalties against those who oppose homosexuality out of faith, conviction, or belief in traditional values. No one should be granted special legal status based on their LGBTQ plus identification. The section reads, it also opposes all efforts to validate transgender identity and calls for a ban on gender affirming care for people under 21. Mm -hmm. And then there's another section uh, entitled counseling methods. It also endorses so-called reintegrative therapy or other counseling methods when consulting clients of any age with gender dysphoria or unwanted sexual attraction. So it's like backwards, here we go here in the state of Texas. This was done purposely during Pride Month. Jesus. So, like I said, I survived witch hunts before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. You know, I was an adult. And you know our children are in tune to everything and what's going on. And can you imagine being a child, reading this on social media, knowing what you're up against? That is why it's so important that uh, we exist, LGBTQ studies exist. Our lifeline chat is 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 truly that a lifeline chat. Yeah, I mean, that's why I keep phrasing a humanitarian crisis. This is yes, this is bad. I mean, this is awful. This is telling people you just can't be you, and you are now criminal because you mm-hmm. just were there, and that was what you were. Yeah. Um, so we need help, everybody. If you're listening, we really need we need some help. We got to help support LGBTQ saves. Um, I know National Coming Out Day, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of happier stories and and things like that, but I think we do need to bring this to the surface and really have people understand some of the struggles and, to your point, the reversal on so many things and how that is really affecting and impacting real lives. These are real people. These are kids. Maybe they just want to play some soccer. And if they can't go out, they can't do that now. I mean, what would that feel like if that was you? Uh, you know, so I guess, uh, you know, if someone listening is feeling really motivated at this point, wants to help, um, what can they do to support you? LGBTQ saves and the organization LGBTQ, Sa- LGBTQ <laughs> saves in addition to donating, you know, what other kind of support, uh, and help do y'all need volunteers? We always need volunteers. I'm going to recommend a, a, a show, uh, a documentary for everybody to watch trans in Trump land powerful, powerful documentary that the actor Tony and the uh, director Tony, he's the actor and director, he joined us. I wanted to share that we also have a uh, virtual uh, happy hour for parents where parents come together. It's actually like PFLAG, but it's on steroids because it's it's growing because we're virtual and parents from all over are joining us. And he was able to come speak to our parents and uh, the actor and the 
four episodes in Trans and Triplin, and the family from the first one were actually were able to help and and facilitate one of our virtual happy hours for our families. So volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. But most importantly, if you're not comfortable now, you have a resource for th these children or your niece or your family member to turn to. Uh, help us save lives, spread our message anywhere and everywhere. Uh, I've been asked to speak at so many churches, not churches, chicken, actual churches. <laughs> uh, and I'm kind of like, uh, okay, but they're, even they are changing. They want to save lives. Uh, the, the Scouts of America have reached out for my training and that in itself speaks volumes to me that, that, you know, they've had, they've had the, uh, the, non-discrimination policies in the books for a while, but now they're acting upon it and, and pushing it forward to better serve uh, all, all children, not just, you know, they want to serve everyone and be diverse. And they, all, they often come, the Scouts of America also have a booth at a lot of our events wow. to, to, to support us in the LGBT community. So, so, yeah. So on the volunteering, since you have some of the, um, remote locations now and you're doing more of an online presence can anyone who's not in texas would they be able to help volunteer yes they can uh okay. just a volunteer form we do a background check our our uh, one of our marketing coordinators that we have uh it lives in wisconsin she does our newsletters and maintains our our, our website and things like that of course we this is what our pain scale ten dollars an hour up to 30 hours a month Ten dollars an hour up to fifty hours. You know, just we have to, we have to, because once we're a full blown yes, full staff running, running a hundred miles an hour. But for right now, we have to be very careful how we spend our money. So, well, and it's every dollar just complete, yes. Im complete yes. impact, complete yes. impact. I mean, yes. it's, I mean, it's... yeah, our binders are fifty dollars a piece. Our scholarships, you know, they're a thousand dollars. If they need food, if they need clothing for an interview, uh, our kid in Michigan often needs food because, you know, the, the grandmother is living on Social Security. And, you know, we send out we send out gift cards to our youth to buy food, to buy clothing, to buy gas if they have to go to Dallas. I had a recently had a 21 year old and a 23 year old living out of a car and they were looking for a place here in the city of Fort Worth, but we had to send them to Dallas. So we were able to gas up their vehicle, buy them some food and send them off on their way. We had to pay for medical bills for another like, youth that needed our help. So we're always helping youth in whatever way that we can to make sure that they continue thriving. Uh, we've had kids, youth that have moved to California because it's safer for them there. So we were able to buy a one-way ticket to California. Um, I ask I ask everyone to look at our YouTube and look at Isa uh, I S A's video and look at Eli West. Uh, some of the youth that we were able to help um, just carry on after being kicked out of the home or being bullied at school. We will definitely link to those for everyone. Yes, to on our and show everyone, notes page. please subscribe to our newsletter because you'll know everything that's going on. Our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, and you'll see how. What, what's going on in our, in our in what we're doing for our youth and how your money's being spent uh but our uh, and subscribe to our youtube because then I, I believe we have to have i don't know what birdie said a thousand subscribers and so many hours so we can start getting money off of that mm. and, uh, but yeah it's incredible and amazon smile has has really has really helped us out as well people are selecting us as a charity and we get like maybe three to four hundred dollars every quarter from Amazon Smile. So we're, we're just trying to find different ways to raise money and make money to continue doing what we do. I know in the the network of listeners we have and the <clears throat> work that we've been doing at Parts TK, I know there are, are a lot of communications professionals uh, in that uh, that might be listening. So again, uh, love to see some dollars come into lgbtqsaves.org, uh, lgbtqsaves.org. But also some time or even just some of your experience and expertise, if you're able to get a hold of Sharon and the team, um, sort of help them think through some of the ways they could be using some of their communications channels, maybe help spread the word, get it out to different locations. I know there's a lot of fundraisers who listen as well. Um, so please just think about that. Um, I really appreciate you being here with us today. I know this, is, uh, this has been heavy conversation uh but it's been wonderful and i know you carry that weight a lot uh, so thank you thank you thank you and uh 
like I invite you, Tony, when you're ever in, in Fort Worth to join us at one of our family dinners. We have four family dinners a year where we bring our, our kids, their families, our volunteers, our board, and everybody just come together and break bread and have activities for the kids. And it's an incredible event. And it's like you can see your work right in front of you. So, uh, but yeah, and like I said, we've had, we have a lot of youth that are, that were with us when they were 14 and now they're in their twenties, mid twenties and paying it forward, still being part of us. That's incredible. So, yeah. It's, it's been an incredible journey. So all, all worth it. All right. Well, thank you again, uh, for everything. Stay safe. I hope we're going to be able to help y'all out with getting some of the, the word about LGBTQ saves out a little bit more to some uh, folks around the country here uh, in the U.S., maybe even internationally. I don't know. I don't know if any listeners there or not. Uh, like I said, this is coming out. This will be National Coming Out Day. So thank you for sharing your story. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, and we do end every podcast with the same question. So I've got to ask you or else I won't be following the process. <laughs> uh, so what is your go-to song when you need a boost and why? It's, it's, it, uh, it gets everybody. It's, an, it's Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine by John Lennon. By John Lennon still today. Uh, I remember hearing it as a kid and I didn't understand it until, you know, I got a little older and mm -hmm. it really can be that way. If we, if we really, you know, come together <clears throat> especially for our youth. I really think that, uh, you know, when I uh, sign off on my emails, I always say, what are you doing to make this world a better place? Uh, I'm on this side of the fence. I'm not trying to hand out a torch. I'm trying to light torches to create more hope, the light of hope for especially our youth, because our youth are still struggling. And uh, like I said, I attempted suicide in the late 70s. And here we are, 2022, kids are still trying to take their lives. So we have to do something for our youth, bottom line. So yes, it, I still imagine. I still uh, imagine. It's a, as I phrase, you're not the only one. I think yeah. there are, there are a lot of us. Yes. Yes. Let's do something about it. Let's do it together. And I, I think you had said it earlier too, just for everyone listening, it was, you know, one, one adult who's willing to listen. Yes. An enemy simply who, whose story you don't know about. So take time to listen. So, well, thank you, thank you for sharing. I hope uh, everyone also gave us a good listen and listened to your story. And really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.